How many of y'all have had certain patterns of thinking that have been negative for a long time? I mean a long time. I don't know how old the man was, but 38 years, trust me, I'm 39, is a long time. This is the entire span of my natural life, and for so long he's been unable to move that now he cannot recognize the help that is standing right in front of him. And Jesus asks a question that I have often heard misinterpreted when he says, do you want to get well. Tone is everything. That's why you can't text every conversation, because tone is everything. Sometimes you need to pick up the phone and call people, because completely depending on the tone is how you see the heart of Jesus. I always read it for a long time like Jesus said, do you want to get well? I almost see him now like he's got something in his back pocket, and he's sneaking around the pool looking for somebody. They say God helps those who help themselves, but I almost see Jesus looking for somebody who can't, and he's like, I see you caught in the situation. You want to get well? And the man has every reason to be suspicious. Can you imagine how many people have taken advantage of him? in almost 40 years of suffering? How many hustlers have come through the pool at Bethesda trying to sell a magic potion or some bubbling water? Hey, I got some cream, man. Put it on your legs. I promise it's blessed. Hey, man, I promise you, I'll bring you to the pool. I'll push you in when the water starts bubbling. Just give me half now and half after the move. I promise you, I can carry you in. I got you. How many times did somebody make him a promise? Because it seems cruel that Christ, the expression of the love of God, would stand over a man who couldn't move and ask him such a ridiculous question. Do you want to lose weight? <laughs> well, yeah. Do you, do you want to be happy? Well, yeah. Do you want to be able to live at peace without anxiety? Well, yeah. What you selling? I heard this spiel before. I tried that diet. How many of y'all tried that diet before? I put a meditation app on my phone. <laughs> y'all, to be honest with you, I got four meditation apps on my phone. I tried all of them. I either fall asleep or my leg starts doing like that. I can't do it. Everybody tells me to meditate. The Bible says meditate. Russell Brand says meditate. Joe Rogan says meditate. Everybody's telling me to meditate. I tried it. I really did try it. They also taught me about portion control. I tried portion control. How many of y'all tried? Somebody told me one time, they said, here's how, you, here's how you stay at an ideal weight. When you're full, stop eating. My only problem, I never found full. <laughs> that gauge got broken somewhere in my childhood. I never felt full, so I kept eating. I tried that. Oh, they say if you don't complain, you will feel more connected to God. I tried it, but I found out sometimes if you don't complain, nothing changes. I tried so hard not to complain. I, one time I was going to go seven days without complaining, and I thought if I could do it, I could make a sermon out of it. I thought I could call it, you know, seven days, a week of worship or something like that. I tried so hard not to complain for seven days. What happened was, <laughs> and this is so embarrassing to admit to you, the more I tried not to complain externally, because sometimes you can fix the symptom. Now I'm in the text. You can fix the symptom and stop trying to complain, but the root of it, what happened to me was I went five good days without complaining, but on day six, the walls of Jericho came tumbling down a day early. Everything in my path was, oh, it was a tornado. It was a downpour, because when you fix the symptom but don't address the system that created the symptom, the end is worse than the beginning.
You want to get well? Well, yeah. I'm trying. When you get to heaven, you'd be surprised who's there and who's not. But one thing you might really be shocked about, this dude, whoever he is in John 5, is going to have a long line of preachers waiting to apologize to him for how we misinterpreted his story in John chapter 5. Oh, I've heard everything. I've heard it said that in 38 years, the man should have been able to crawl or roll his way to the edge of the pool. Yeah, like that would work. Because now somebody stronger than you is just going to pull you back at the moment. You're still powerless to fall in at the right time. And besides, when has Jesus ever taunted someone into transformation? You really think that's the spirit of the Savior? Some of us do. We really picture God like standing over us in our minds, our concept of God like, you don't want it bad enough. If you would have done it different when they were eight, they wouldn't have been in so much trouble when they were 18. See? You screwed them up. That's what God sounds like to a lot of us. So it's no surprise that when we hear Jesus say, Do you want to get well? He says it with a snarl, you know? Do you even want to get well? Do you even lift? Are you even serious? I mean, prove it if you do. If you want to get well, say, I want to get well. So why did he ask it? Why did he ask the man, do you want to get well, before he helped him get up and walk? And as I prayed through that this week, I realized that before Jesus could help him walk, he had to help him want. I don't know who this is for, but God is dealing with your desires in this season of your life. You have been disappointed over and over and over again, and every time you try, nobody notices, and every time you try, you come up short. Sickness is cyclical. It comes around, it goes around. You're well for a little while, and then it's the same thing all over again, but this time it's only worse. Because now, not only are you back where you started, but you have less hope that it is ever going to be different because you've cycled through it one more time just to realize, well, I guess I'm just a cynical person. Well, I guess I'm just a negative person. I guess nobody in my family was meant to go to college. I guess, see, when you hang around the colonnades with people who are sick, sickness becomes normal to you. And it starts to be easier for you to just accept the condition than to challenge it. Because to challenge the condition means to risk disappointment. And some of us have tried, got blocked. Tried, got blocked. Tried, got blocked. And now people see you and they assume that you don't care. No, I care. I cared, and I cared so much, but they didn't care back. And I tried so hard, and I still got looked over. And don't you know it's hard when your expectation has been damaged by disappointment? It's a slow damage. It's a slow tearing of the muscle fibers. It's a slow deterioration of your hope by disappointment. It is not one event that creates it. It's over and over. I tried, and I tried, and I smiled, and I stayed. And I cooked and I parented and I disciplined and I showed up and I didn't care. And the man has finally gotten to a place, I believe, where he is tired of trying. Are you? It's supposed to be the Sabbath, it's supposed to be a day of rest. Why did Jesus stop by the pool on the day of rest to perform a miracle? You're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. This may offend you, but it won't be the first time. <laughs> if this offends you, your, your metal detector is turned up to level 10 anyway, and you need to just turn it down. Y'all notice we live in a, a gotcha culture, an outrage culture. Just Nobody can say anything. You can't say anything anymore. And The more the people try to help us, the more we crucify them if they say the wrong thing. Have you noticed that? 
This is how they treat Jesus. He heals the man on the Sabbath, and all that anyone can talk about is that he did it on the wrong day. So this is what I want to say that was going to offend you. You thought that was what was going to offend you? No, 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 no. Jesus walks up on the Sabbath, and, and when he tells the man in verse 8, get up, pick up your mat, and walk, he is, he is trying to get the man to break Sabbath. So Jesus walks up to the pool, looks around, and asks the man, what's going on in, in your heart right now? Because before I can help you walk, I have to heal your will. So here's what Jesus does that we don't like. He calls BS. He calls, watch this, he calls BS. And I don't know what you're thinking about right now, but I'm talking about broken system. See, now there's one thing in the verse, there's one thing in the verse that doesn't make sense unless you understand the historical context. When the man says, I keep trying, I keep trying to get down there, but I can never be first. I'm not fast enough. In fact, I can't move at all. I, I keep trying, but every time I try, something blocks me. And Jesus says, that's because this system is broken. If you'll notice, give me uh, verse 4 of the scripture. I forgot to read it. John 5, 4. Jared. It's been a long week, you know, staff advance. Jared. Where's Jared? Can you get him? Yeah, I need him. Verse 4 unlocks the whole thing. <laughs> we can wait. This man waited 38 years. We can wait three minutes. It's not in the manuscript. It's not available. Oh, they they added that verse later. Yeah. It's not even in the original manuscript. They they added a scripture later. They added a verse to explain the situation. It, it didn't make sense, so they had to add. You can go back to your job now. They had. But come here, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. So a lot of times. When a situation in my life doesn't make sense to me, I add a verse. I add a verse. You know how we do? It's like, okay, rather than deal with it, I would rather explain it in a way that excuses me from having to deal with it. There's a reason verse 4 isn't in there, because it's not in there. There's some stuff that you're putting in your story that doesn't belong there because God didn't speak it and it's not true anymore. You go back. See, what the man said reflects a broken system and it reflects a bad story. That's another BS. The devil has got some of us telling ourselves some really bad stories, and this man has been telling himself a story 38 years. No one wants to help me. Everybody's out to get me. Every time I try, no one wants to help me. Everybody's out to get me. Every time I try. So here comes Jesus. He doesn't know Jesus. He's never met Jesus. Jesus is new to the scene. Jesus hasn't even done the Captain D's miracle yet. That's in John chapter 6. He hasn't even gotten familiar with this guy yet. He hasn't even had an opportunity to unpack the whole historicity of his situation. So he's standing in front of Jesus and he's rightfully skeptical because he's in a broken system where the religious leaders are trying to let the first ones in and keep the rest back. And unless you keep the law this good, you can't be healed. Of course he's stuck. He's stuck in a broken system. So are some of us. He's stuck in a bad story, and so are some of us. And we've inserted verses that aren't even there to explain why we are the way we are. We think it's our job to suffer. You know, suffering for Christ and for the good of others is one thing, and sacrifice is. 
but to suffer the shame that he already took away from you is to snatch back what he nailed to the cross. It is not your job to suffer like that. That's a broken system. I'm telling you, men and women of the Most High God, religion is a broken system. That's why Jesus went for one to show you this is a relationship. I want to deal with you one on one. I want to speak to you like a person, not like you're some kind of project, not like you're some kind of defect. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.